Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be making some spotted puppy slider cards today. I'll make three cards, and I'm using some stamps and dies from my favorite things. This is our new dog set. They have several dog sets, but this is the one that just came out last month. And what I decided to do was make black and white spotted puppies because I have a black and white spotted puppy myself. She's not a kind of quirky little puppy like these are. She's more of a lanky puppy. She's a border collie, but she has great markings that are really fun to color on cards. So I am going to be making all of these dogs look like her. They're all going to be black and white. So she's got two spots over her eyes, a little white stripe down the middle, a little spot on her tail, which is really cute. It's like marking the best spot to itch any dog. It's right there where they can't reach. And I'm just going to add the color on each one of these puppies. I do have them die cut already because what I do find is for me, because I'm a terrible die cutter, that is probably why you don't see me doing much die cutting here on my YouTube channel or over on my blog, but I do find that I have better success if I get the die cutting done and the stamping done before I start my coloring because there's nothing like getting to the end of something, get the die cut done, and it is crooked because I can't line up dies very well for the life of me. So I did them first so that I could get them all organized and ready to go and know that I wasn't going to mess up my coloring afterward. So I've got all of these little spots colored on all the pups and I'm going to run around and use a little C3 to add some shadows to the white areas. Even on a white dog there are shadow areas and if you saw my Vienna she's always got some shadow areas because she is a digger. She likes to dig holes. That is her thing. I think she's trying to make her way to China. I might have to buy her a plane ticket instead because she's trying to do it the manual way. Fortunately she doesn't do it anywhere near the fence so she's not going to escape. However she, she does seem to like to just turn over the garden soil. Bless her heart. <laughs> so I'm uh, coloring in all those gray areas that I thought I'd throw some other color in here. I wanted to do some really simple designs, very simple kinds of colorway. So I was going to do black and white with a pop of color and I chose blue for my pop. If you know B04, it's not nearly this light. I had some issues with trying to get the camera settings right on this because it had the black paper behind it so I could really compare the color to black. However, now my camera picked up weirdness so the color looks a little bit on the lighter side on all these other areas. So it is a much darker color than that. I'm going around now to soften some of those areas of the C3 with C0. I've had a lot of people ask, do you have to color something right away in order to get the blending to happen? Well, you notice that I put the C3 down a few minutes ago and then took time to do my blue before going back to this blending. I find that it still works. The moisture that I'm putting down with this C0 is still adding moisture to the paper, so it's going to re-wet things. I've had images where I've started coloring one evening and then finished it the next day and it was perfectly fine. So I don't feel you have to continue it right that very moment, but if it the color doesn't seem to blend, just add a little bit more of the lighter color. You may need to work at it a little bit in order to get that paper wet enough because Copic Marker blends with the moisture in the fibers of the paper. So now I'm going to use two other grays to add some dimension to all of my black spot areas. And just adding a, just a little dab here and there. On the ears, notice that I'm giving the ears some shape so that you almost see the inside of the ear this way. You could also make the inside of the ear white because some dogs have white inside. If you're trying to do your dog, check and see what color the inside of the ears are because lots of them will be lighter colors or brown colors or pink colors or whatever, even if it is a black and white dog like this. Um, I'm going to then run around and blend it a little bit with a C8 to just give myself an easier transition to the C6. And then I'm going right over top of everything with that C6. And going to do some blending. Now I'm going to wait and allow it to set and allow it to dry a little bit before I decide whether I'm finished with the blending on those areas. 
you'll notice that some of them don't look really perfect, but the moisture in the paper changes things. So sometimes when you're doing your coloring, you'll notice later on that something doesn't look as good as it did when you colored it the first place. And I can promise you that these actually do look significantly better than they do in whatever weird lighting things have happened here, because they did come out very nicely. And uh, But I am going to go back and add some more gray to those spots, because I want to smooth those transitions out just a little bit more. I'm adding some gray to a few other areas on the train and the car to make sure that I get all those covered. And now that the spots are good and dry, I can see exactly where I need a little bit of extra work. You'll notice that the eyes are disappearing. And if you are coloring a black dog, like the whole dog is black, or just spots around the eyes, I have a trick to share with you a little bit later about how I handled the fact that the eyes kind of disappear here. But first, this little train, I want to have it on a slider that goes up and down. So I'm trying this thing. I'm, I'm snipping not all the way through it, but to allow those fibers of the paper to break so that the little dog and the train can go up and down on the, the little slider here. So I've got my little piece of dimensional adhesive. I have a double width of it, and it's stuck onto the back now of the doggies and slid through that slit from the slider die, which is also from my favorite things. And then I've also got the, um, the little piece of paper that's going to be on the back side. You can go from the back side too, or the front side. doesn't matter which side you start with when you're assembling a card like this. So now I'll just glue the train portion on here. And my little doggy then goes along this, this curve. So if you have multiple pieces or you have one piece that's really long, you can still use it for a slider part. For a slider, you do need to build up the dimension on it so that those parts can move underneath of that piece of paper. So I've got some dimensional adhesive under there and I'm just gonna stick it onto a white card base and leave it really pretty simple. Here's where the secret for the eyes comes in, this bottle of Nuvo, which is like a pearl pen or a liquid pearls type of product but I find I can get really super tiny little eyes, little dots, and it means that the eyes are gonna show up on that black, the, the black colored areas. I'm also gonna use some glossy accents on the nose. Could have used the black on the whole nose, but I thought glossy accents would be a little different and a little fun. So here is the finished cute little card. Very simple design, and when you've got a really simple design, don't worry about throwing the kitchen sink at it. Let it be really adorable, and especially if it's got some motion going on and an interactive card, it doesn't need a whole lot more. Here's another one with one of the other puppies, and since I used the heart sentiment, I punched out a heart and colored it with some pink and glued it onto his mouth so he'll carry his little heart along. And then this little guy's got a, a little roller coaster of a slider to itch for a play date and ride along. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can subscribe if you haven't yet already. You can click for more on the blog if you'd like to go pin these cards for referencing when you get the stamp set and make a card with them. And there's also a couple other videos here if you'd like to see some others by me. And I will see you guys later. Have a really wonderful day. Go out and make something beautiful. See you next time.